Alrighty, hello, hello. Welcome everyone. How are we all doing today? Hope everyone is doing fantastic. Welcome to the Launchbox Celebration stream. This is day two. We're going to give it a few minutes for some folks to come in. So mosey on in, get comfy, grab a drink, grab a snack. We've got an amazing session planned for you today. Hello, everyone. Where are we all joining from? I know we had a very global uh, stream yesterday, so uh, shout out your uh, location. Guinea, Poland, fantastic. Well, welcome. What time is it over in uh, over there? Australia, California, Iowa, New York, Chile, Brazil, Netherlands, Germany, Turkey. Fantastic. I know, especially big shout out to our uh, European friends because I know that it is uh, particularly late over there. Kansas, you Kentucky, Morocco, amazing. 11 p.m. But not not too bad, not too bad. Well, as we're all coming in, uh, welcome to the Launchbox Celebration Day Two. We have a really fun stream planned for you today. We hope you've been enjoying the events that are going on all week. Uh, feels like it's been a long week, uh, even though we are barely just getting started. We've got a lot more coming this week. Um, it's great to see some engagement on our. Uh, forum activities uh, and of course these streams uh, got some interesting and diverse things to show you today yep texas south, south africa florida amazing okay so as you know uh these streams are to celebrate launchbox's 11th birthday can you believe it it's been uh it was a really fun stream yesterday uh we set up a brand new launchbox build from scratch yesterday um, and we're actually going to continue that build. Uh, today's session is going to be focused on advanced uh, features and, and configuration. And don't let that scare you if you're new around here. When I say that, it's more just uh, some of the more, um, you know, out of the woods kind of features that uh, you may not use right away, but uh, we want to show them off. We want to show the full potential of what a LaunchBox instance can look like. So the idea today is that by the end of the session, uh, if you're a veteran of LaunchBox, uh, you uh, will hopefully have learned something new. And if you're new, then uh, by the end of this session, you will hopefully have a full understanding of the, the real full potential um, and hopefully uh, excited to get started on your own brand new build. Hello from Dubai. Yes, of course. Must be very late there. But we appreciate that uh, whatever you could have been doing, sleeping, uh, you are here with us today. So before we get started, um, we're going to just uh, have a quick look. Uh, for those of you who uh, uh, I'm sure you're all aware because <laughs> we've been uh, shamelessly plugging this throughout the week, uh, this is our celebration website, which you can access from our forum, from our website. Uh, and we have a lot of fun stuff going on over here. I'll just quickly run through some of the highlights. Um, of course, as I'm sure a lot of you are uh, well aware of, we have a nice giveaway going on at the moment, uh, which is very exciting. Some amazing prizes up for grabs. Um, and uh, if you didn't manage to join the stream yesterday, uh, we do have a secret code that will be going out later on in the stream. And you can use that secret code to uh, get some extra entries, uh, some significant extra entries for your um, for your inst uh, for your giveaway. Uh, so some fantastic prizes. ROG Alex, very jealous of this. Uh, definitely want to grab one of these myself at some point. Um, but also some great Android devices, uh, some mini PCs. Um, and we also have Steam Keys, which are being given out through our forum events uh, and, of course, license giveaways if you don't have a, a license for LaunchBox Premium. Okay. I know some of you, uh, exactly, uh, some of you might be thinking, well, who is this uh, strange British guy that I've never seen before? Um, well, my name is uh, Andy. Uh, you might know me as AstroBob on the forums. Uh, I'm a relatively new member of the LaunchBox team. Uh, we are a growing uh, community of people and uh, the team is, is growing strong. We have a lot of big plans um, for the company. And so, uh, yes, I am relatively new around here. So uh, it's great to meet all of you. Uh, you may have seen some of our Meet the Team posts that are going out this week. Um, and that's just to kind of provide a bit more insight into some of the inner workings of the company and the people who are behind it. Uh, of course, Jason, obviously uh, the original visionary of LaunchBox and uh, 
contribute uh, still contributes a lot to uh, the community and the app. But, uh, there might be some people that you've uh, not seen before, so uh, hopefully this will be a nice introduction. Okay, so we have uh, a few things going on this week. Like I said, we are on day two already. We have uh, the advanced setup and customization workshop. Uh, we have some more team spotlights going on. Um, and we also have day two of our game gauntlet. Now this has been going uh, quite well. It's been amazing seeing some of the uh, contributions to these uh, posts. Uh, if you haven't done so already, uh, mosey on over and have a look. We have some great Steam keys going out, uh, an unreleased game, Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collection. Very excited for that. Um, and all you have to do is participate in any of the days, but there are additional Steam keys up for grabs for each day. Uh, so for example, day two, we're focusing on company collections. And it looks like uh, Sega Mega Drive Genesis Classics is winning the poll right now. Uh, the winning game, uh, there will be additional keys going out uh, for that game. So uh, definitely vote on the game that uh, you might want to win and uh, jump in on the conversation. Uh, we have some other great stuff going on in our community corner. We have some playlists that you can contribute to. Um, and again, there are additional Steam keys up for grabs on those playlists. Uh, a nice selection, actually. Um, some unreleased games. Uh, Sonic X Shadow Generations, a personal favorite of mine. In fact, who saw the uh, Sonic 3 trailer that just went out last night? Any uh, Sonic 3 movie fans in the house? Uh, it was good. Very good, actually. Uh, as a Sonic fan myself, very, very excited. And you can tell uh, the British in me is coming out. That, that's my idea of enthusiasm is it was good. You know, that in, in, in British terms, that means it was amazing. I was mind blown, but uh, that's how we roll. Uh, how do you participate in the Steam key giveaways? Um, there are uh, instructions on each of the posts. Uh, it's mostly just a uh, it's mostly just participating. If you uh, participate in the various posts, um, then you will be in the chance for a running for the Steam keys. Uh, so, for example, the community playlist, you just have to submit some ideas for the game gauntlet. It's just answering a question and voting on the poll. So very easy to participate if you haven't already. Exactly. Sonic Black says it wasn't good. It was great. It was great. The Sonic 3 movie trailer. It was fantastic. Okay, well, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, get started with today's stream. Um, we have quite a few things that I want to run through, um, but of course it is uh, relatively free flow. So please feel free to jump in with some questions um, and uh, we can always take a different turn. Uh, today's session is on advanced customization. So utilizing some of the more hidden features of LaunchBox. Um, and so, uh, yeah, hopefully everyone's going to learn a lot of fun things today. We have a question that says, do you have plans for game cart integration? Tickets redemption based on achievements? Um, not 100% sure I, I fully understand that, but uh, definitely feel free to elaborate. Uh, we are going to cover uh, retro achievements today as part of uh, this session. Um, yeah, feel free, to, uh, feel free to post more information on that. We'll see if we can get you, uh, get you some answers there. Okay, we'll just do one last quick check, and I think we're going to jump in. Okay, so this is our build from yesterday. Uh, for those of you who were on the stream yesterday, uh, this may look familiar. I have since gone through and just fleshed this out a little bit. It's looking a little bit more healthy now. We've got a lot more platforms in here. Um, it's still a relatively small library compared to uh, what most uh, LaunchBox libraries would be. Um, only about 220 games. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the, the average library is uh, over a sort of a thousand or so. Uh, I've even seen some in the 10,000s, which can be uh, very scary as to know what to play next. Um, but we've got some classic systems in there, a lot of Nintendo and Sega ones, some Sony, uh, even got some Atari going, some uh, TurboGrafx-16, um, and a nice mixture of handhelds as well. 20K games, yep, that's uh, not an unheard of number for the, uh, for the general launch box library for the power user. So what we did yesterday is uh, we went and we imported all of our games. We sort of showcased how we can get things in. Um, we looked at the various ways that you can view information in the launch box through sort of playlists and searching and filtering. We looked at things like the game details panel, uh, 3D boxes, how to set those up. 
Um, we also looked at uh, setting up the emulators themselves. So we got RetroArch and PCSX2 up and running. Um, and we also had a look at Big Box, which is uh, the premium um, sort of arcade cabinet style front end, uh, you know, home theater front end for LaunchBox. And we looked at the free trial that's available there. Uh, so that's just a quick recap of where we were before we uh, started today's session. So the question is uh, about arc arcade instances, game cards to remember the player saves, uh, track each player's achievement. Yeah, so finally, um, I know this is not directly related to, the, to your question, but uh, we are, uh, in fact, the, the very next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a feature that is unreleased as of, yet, as of now. Uh, it is coming out in 13.16, and it is regarding uh, game saves. Uh, it is something that we're very excited to showcase, and we hope a lot of people will find um, use of it. Uh, I know it's not directly addressing um, what you're talking about with sort of big box and arcade cabinets, but uh, it is a first step in helping us sort of build a launch box ecosystem of of platforms. We know that not everyone plays on just a single platform. They might have different devices, um, and this is a step in the right direction for that. So uh, apologies. I, I haven't directly answered it definitely feel free to drop that in our ama if you want more clarification on that um and also i should mention we do have the ama ongoing on which uh, i would highly recommend folks uh, chime in on on our final stream we will be uh, picking up some of these questions and we'll also be updating this post um this one here ama oops so uh, feel free to uh drop some questions in there. We'll make sure that we get sort of thorough answers. We'll obviously try and answer what we can on the stream, um, but uh, for more sort of in-depth look, we'll jump over there. Alrighty. Someone says, what browser is that? Uh, it's just Chrome. It's just a very uh, stripped down uh, basic version of Chrome. Uh, nothing special, uh, but uh, definitely the uh, size of everything is blown up just for the stream. So. Uh, uh, but yeah, just a very basic Chrome profile. Okay. Someone's got some uh, questions about MAME high scores. Uh, MAME high scores, unfortunately, it's not something we're going to cover in today's stream um, just because of the setup. Uh, we are going to, we can touch on it and we can mention it um, and we'll give you some, if you have more questions on that, we can uh, let you know how it works. We do have some good tutorials online as to how to get that up and running. Um, but uh, yeah, we can answer some questions. On so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at an unreleased feature. Um, this is coming out in 13.16. It's available in the current beta right now. Um, and it is regarding game saves. Now, we're very excited about this. Um, for a bit of context, uh, when it comes to managing game saves with something like RetroArch, for example, um, it does an OK job of managing them for you. You sort of never really need to look at them unless you want to sort of uh, tweak them, move them around, things like that. Um, but what we thought we could uh, we thought we could do we thought we could do it better, and so what we have in the latest beta is a way to manage game saves directly within LaunchBox, and that includes not just importing uh, importing game saves, but managing multiple saves and actually backing up those saves as well. So I'm going to give an example where uh, a lot of older games, uh, for example, Pokemon was a famous example where you only had one save game per cartridge, which could, uh, for me, in my household, definitely was an issue. Um, it was one of those games where you sort of had to convince your parents, if you had a, a sibling, to get uh, both Pokemon games. I think they knew what they were doing there um, because obviously there was only one save. Um, and especially if you're into something like retro achievements, maybe you already have a save and you want to start over, but you don't want to lose that save. But RetroArch um, is pretty dumb when it comes to the saves in that. it has it, The save has to match the ROM file with its exact file name. Um, and so we've... Uh, managed to find a way to make this process a lot easier. So uh, we're going to have a quick look at it. Um, now we're going to go to uh, Pokemon because this is the save that I want to use. Uh, I actually have my original save from Pokemon Ruby all the way back in the day. All the way back in the day. Um, I still have it dumped from my cartridge. And what I want to do is I actually want to import it. So. Uh, unless you're on the latest beta, you won't see this yet, but this will be coming in 13.16. Um, under game saves, we have uh, this new option that says uh, game saves. Uh, just a quick, um, I've just seen some questions in the chat for the giveaway. And yes, I, I forgot to mention that. Uh, 
For those who didn't get your, your code yesterday, uh, the code will be coming out on the stream later on. Uh, not quite yet, um, but definitely stick around. We will be making that code available on stream um, and you can use that to get some extra entries for your uh, prize giveaway. Okay, so this is a, a new section where we can manage our game saves. Now, I don't have any game saves right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import. So I actually have my childhood save. Uh, it is uh, right here under Pokemon Ruby. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna call this my uh, childhood save. Uh, now, there are two sections. There are your active saves and your save backups. So if you want to manage multiple different save files, whether it's a childhood save versus a current save, um, whether it's just different instances of, of a save that you have, you can actually import multiple saves and it will put them in a backup. And only one save is what we call the active save, right? So all you have to do is literally choose the save that you want and you can import it. And there we go. That's why, that's why this is a beta. Wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be a live stream without a crash. Okay, let's see if we can uh, figure out what that was. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna load this game up first to create a save. So I wanna show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is a brand new game. There is no save file on here just yet. That's absolutely fine. Now, what it will do is it will go and create um, a save. And there we go. So we've got uh, my save game here. Uh, I'm actually just going to re-import this one. So this is the one that I've just created. Uh, I'm going to go and import my uh, save. I'm going to call this my childhood save. Um, and what I'm going to do is actually just delete this active one. So you can see that you can actually clean up saves directly from this, this dialog. I'll just delete this. Uh, let's import that one. There we go. And I should note that it does say early access because uh, this is the very sort of bare bones functionality. We definitely want to extend this, you know, easier ways to manage these things, um, things like that. So it's definitely going to be evolving. Okay. So now, there we go. We have a complete save that has just been imported. This is my original childhood save. Look at that, 54 hours, which is actually not too bad for a game like this. Eight badges. And so what we'll see now is we have the active save and we still have the backups. So the backups, they are actually stored in a different location. So you'll see that this is the RetroArch location. Um, whereas there is a new launch box save lo location, which is where it stores all of the backups. So we're also working on some ways to sort of have us, you know, automatically backup saves and have a sort of save vault, things like that. So uh, yeah, just knowing the difference in those locations, but using this interface, you don't really need to uh, go there. You can kind of use this to, to manage those saves. Yeah, so will the saves be in a dedicated folder? Yep. so like I said, so the backup saves will actually go into this folder here which is launch box and uh, saves. So it's got it by um, uh, system. Whereas the original active saves, those are part of RetroArch's folder. So that's the, the difference between those two. Okay, we're gonna do one more, um, just to quickly check. Uh, I know I have a lot more hours in Pokemon Diamond. I think this was one of the first ones where I actually uh, went all out and got everything on this game. So we'll just do that again. We're gonna to go to saves. I've got my Pokemon Diamond save. And I should note that the name of the save doesn't even have to match straight off the bat. Um, Launchbox will do all the renaming for you. So if you have a save that is a is not matching your ROM, when you import it, it will actually make that connection for you. So you don't have to worry about renaming any of these saves. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and import this and there's something that we we'll definitely need to check there. <laughs> This is why it's a beta. Try that again. Okay, let me just go ahead and create an active one. <laughs> exactly. This is exactly why we did it. We developed this feature to flex your childhood Pokemon saves. Absolutely. Well, I mean, that one wasn't even a flex. The real flex is coming up. There we go. So this is a brand new save. That's cool. So here we go. We've got my 
uh, active one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and import this one. I'm going to call this one the childhood save uh, and delete the active one and import. Go. And let's see what we got. Yep, I think a lot of folks use online uh, storage lockers to uh, sync things. Um, I think long term, the goal here is that we want to be able to sync saves between different LaunchBox devices. So this is definitely just the start of that. There we go. Look at that flex. 161 hours, uh, which again, actually doesn't even compare to, I think, my original Pokemon Gold, which was which I lost. Uh, very sad. Moving house. Uh, I still, uh, to this day, say that uh, our movers stole it, but uh, yeah, it's very sad to lose that cartridge. So the goal, uh, sync with Android device, uh, this is currently on the Windows build. Um, uh, obviously the goal is to be able to uh, sync between all LaunchBox devices, which, inclu which uh, includes Android, but uh, as of right now, this is just in Windows. Let's actually have a quick look. Let's see, uh, see what we got on here. May 11th. Where am I? Oh, I think I actually transferred all of my... Uh... Yeah, see, I've got a pretty rubbish team here. I think I transferred most of them up. You know how you could do that convoluted way of moving everything up through the generations. Uh, I think I may have done this before I backed this up, so not too much on here, but um, exactly. Love the music. Uh, it might be a bit crunchy coming through. Uh, i am uh, got a bit of a strange streaming setup here, so uh might not be the clearest. Okay. Alrighty, so that is our uh, new save functionality. Uh, one additional thing you can do is we now have badges to show uh, the individual saves. So if you're familiar with badges, showing things like, you know, favorites, hiddens, things like that, there is a new option to show badges that have saved games. So you can see here now these two games um, have little save icons. Uh, you can also filter. So I can say uh, game saves and I can say has any saved game. And there we go. Now this is really nice if you want to potentially clean up saves um, or even just see ones that exist on disk. Um, and I should note that we haven't gone into it today, but this also supports save states. So there is actually a different badge for save states, but it works in exactly the same way. If there is a state, a save state present on disk from RetroArch, then you can see it. You can back it up. You can rename it in the same way that uh, you, I've just shown you with these saves. Okay. So that is a first look at our saves. Now, like we talked about, uh, where this can come in quite handy is with something like Retro Achievements. So I don't know how many Retro Achievements users we have here. I personally am a very big fan of it. It's a fantastic way to relive some of those old games. Um, but especially if you have those saves and you want to start new, you don't want to lose that save, but you want to start a new run so that you can uh, unlock those achievements. So this is a great way of kind of backing that up and then starting a new save if you want. Now, in terms of what Retro Achievements can do, um, Obviously, it's integrated with RetroArch, but within LaunchBox, um, what it will do is, once it's set up, it will show you which of your games have achievements supported. Uh, so all you have to do is go into uh, Options, and under Integrations, under Retro Achievements, you will just sign in. For those who haven't used Retro Achievements, uh, you can sign up for an account on their website. Just uh, search for Retro Achievements. Pretty straightforward. But basically, once you're logged in, um, it will show you your score up in the top right. Um, and the, one of the first things you'll want to do is go to achievements and scan all games. And what that will do, um, without diving too deep, uh, Retro Achievements requires that you have a specific ROM file or a version of a ROM file in order to uh, unlock achievements. And it depends on the game. Usually it's like the American version, but sometimes it might be a European version. Sometimes it might be a patched version that requires um, a specific patch. Um, and so what this will do is it will check uh, the actual hashes of those ROMs from your directory and it will match those against Retro Achievements. And if there's a match, it will show you um, a little badge that says you have, uh, there are supported achievements for these games. Okay. So 
what I've done is I've just gone and scanned all of my games. And so what I can do now is go to badges and under game attributes, I'm going to enable achievements. And you can see this nice little trophy icon now. So this tells me that there are supported achievements for these games. In the game details, I can go down the right hand side. Under retro achievements, it uh, I can actually see a list of what they are, which is great. Reach the desert, reach Jafar's palace in Aladdin. And there we go. Now, one thing you will need to do if this is the first time you're using retro achievements is uh, this only configures uh, retro achievements to scan games within launch box. It, um, at least not yet, it does not uh, log into retro achievements in RetroArch. So the only thing you'll need to do is go into RetroArch and under the achievements section, you just have to turn that on and then you just log in with your, your account. So that's, uh, it, it trips a few people up because we're kind of almost there, but uh, unfortunately, uh, you do need to actually log in to RetroArch uh, via, with uh, Retro Achievements. So I've got my username. Um, hardcore mode is just a different way of, uh, it just uh, it turns off things like save states and rewinds. Uh, you can turn that on or off. You'll still get achievements, um, just different types. Uh, and so we're going to escape out of that. And uh, we're going to go to, for example, a nice little game, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. A personal favorite of mine. Exactly. Retro achievements are great, but remembering how difficult they are <laughs> to master is a little uh, humbling. Exactly. They actually added um, a nice feature recently where rather than like com fully completing and sort of mastering a game, they actually give you, um, they actually reward you for what they call beating a game. So it's mostly tied to progression. So usually it's just like beating the main story of a game. And it kind of relieves that pressure of trying to go for the sort of full 100% because a lot of those achievements can be like very, very hardcore. Uh, so it's definitely something that I, I personally gravitate to. So now we're in game, a classic game. Okay. And I know that if I eat this enemy, there we go. Top left, you can see I have an achievement. Very simple achievement. I think this game had uh, a lot of nice straightforward ones. Here's another one. Yeah, there we go. Get the spark ability. Fantastic. So, although I would love to sit here and play Nightmare in Dreamland all day, we're going to quit. Because what that is going to do, and I'm not sure how long it takes to update, is... There we are. Instant. So, those unlocked achievements will now show in RetroArch. Exactly, yep. Yeah, beat indicators. They are a lovely feature. Uh, so, now what we can do is we can actually... Uh, we've got some filter options here where we can actually see games that have achievements, uh, which is yes. Uh, maybe I actually want to see games that don't have achievements. Um, we're still searching for Kirby. Let's go all. So this could be that you potentially don't have the correct ROM or also just that uh, the game literally doesn't support achievements yet. Um, so you can use this as a nice way to configure some of those things. Uh, but what I want to do is uh, I actually want to create some, some backlog playlists. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create what we call a new category and I'm in the platform category view. I'm gonna create a new category and I'm gonna call it backlog. Um, I'm gonna this one backlog. Uh, I'm gonna put it in the root directory. Uh, I don't wanna put it in handhelds. And a category is uh, just something that you can add to your platform categories list where you can uh, Categorize, you can, you can use it to categorize different platforms if you want. Uh, I personally like to use them to categorize different playlists. So I'm going to hit OK. Um, and then under that category, I'm going to add a new playlist. Um, I'm, going to, I'm going to call it uh, In Progress, for example. And I'm going to auto-populate it. I'm going to say uh, any achievements. Uh, no, I'm going to say, where is it? Retro achievements. The retro achievements... I'm going to say some earned. And what that means is if I've unlocked some achievements, then it will show up here. And there we go. That Kirby game that I just unlocked some achievements for will show up here. Now, of course, this is not an ideal way of monitoring a backlog. Uh, that doesn't really mean anything, but it's just to sh kind of show you how I can create some of these playlists using that achievement data. Uh, so likewise, if I wanted to, you know, have a playlist that shows games that I've mastered, um, from an achievement point of view, I could say, uh, show me games where retro achievements all earned. 
and of course right now there's nothing in there very hard to master some of those games um but uh, i think you get the idea Question about the save feature. Um, it will be released in 13.16. And that will be coming uh, very soon. Do the achievement indicators show uh, up in big box? That's a good question. I don't believe they do. Uh, the badges aren't in big box. Whether you can access them with a theme, I'm, I'm honestly not sure, but certainly the default themes, uh, they don't uh, show those those badges per se. Um, potentially that's where creating some of these playlists could help where you can actually uh, create playlist playlists under your uh, platforms for um, games that support achievements or sort of have achievements okay correct me if i if i misspoke there in terms of uh being able to add those badges on in into a big box theme Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. We have now some games with uh, some achievements. Um, the, we have a platform category with some playlists inside um, and I'm ready to start unlocking achievements. It is sim as simple as that. Just remember to log into RetroArch as well um, and then you are ready to go. Okay, so uh, we're going to quickly tidy up some uh, metadata. We're also going to um, import some more games from different platforms outside of RetroArch. We're going to do some advanced uh, emulation setup. Um, but before we do that, um, I want to tidy up our library a little bit. Um, so one of the first things I want to do is I have this nice list of uh, platforms. But the problem is uh, they are ordered alphabetically, which some people may like. But I personally actually like to order them based on the uh, the manufacturer. So, for example, although some of them are called like Nintendo, so Nintendo Entertainment, GameCube, things like Super Nintendo obviously is right at the bottom because it starts with S. Um, and what you can do is apply a sort order. Now, we looked at this yesterday, but uh, if you edit the platform, you can uh, sort orders apply to pl uh, game platforms as well. So we have it, it's called sort title. I'm going to call this, I'm just going to call it Nintendo Console 1. I'm going to hit OK. Nothing changed, but if I edit Super Nintendo and I put this as Nintendo Console 2, see how it jumped up? So it's using that sort order instead of just alphabetical. The sort order will always take the priority. Likewise, Nintendo 64 came next. We're going to call this Nintendo Console 3. And then GameCube is already there, but just for completeness, we're going to call this Nintendo Console 4. And there we go. That's looking a lot more like what I want. Uh, likewise, with the Sega consoles, we're going to call this Sega console. I think this was the second main one. I'm sure I'm sure I butchered that. Uh, and I believe this was the fourth main one. There we go. So that's looking a bit tidier. Uh, all my other ones are fine. Uh, likewise, down here, uh, let's, uh, we're going to call this one Nintendo handhelds. Number one, we'll do number technically three, I guess, if you count the Game Boy Color. And then we'll do the Nintendo Console 4. There we go. I'm happy with that. I could uh, spend all day organizing these playlists. Fantastic. Didn't know you could do that. Amazing. It's these little tidbits that we really hope are useful from these streams. Uh, so yes, yeah, sort order, really nice. And I showed yesterday as well, but you can use that to apply a sort order to things like playlists. Uh, you can also apply it to categories. That's how, for example, with this favorites playlist, um, uh, and I said yesterday, I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it, but uh, by default, it shows up down here. Um, I like to sort of bump these playlists to the top of my platform category, so I can literally just put like an underscore in there, which will bump it to the top. Someone tell me if there's a better way to, to do that. Exactly, new skill unlocked. <laughs> yep, and uh, yeah, Super Nintendo is always a weird one because uh, it always never appears in the list with all the other Nintendo consoles. It's always, you know, S, so it's right down at the bottom. Nice to be able to rearrange that. 
Yeah, or exactly Nintendo NES. Um, and the thing is, is that you can actually rename these platforms if you really want to. The sort order will remain the same. So for example, uh, like someone said, if I wanted to call this Nintendo SNES, then, uh, although I'm not gonna do that because it's going to change uh, folders. So let's leave that for now. Okay, we wanna tidy this up a little bit more. Um, we looked at badges yesterday and today. Um, so we've got a few more badges that are quite useful. We've got favorite games, um, but we do have these uh, little bits of metadata on a game over here. So favorites, uh, and the, the intention for these is there are additional ways that you can uh, sort and sort of organize your games. Um, and these badges, uh, I believe some of them will show up in Launchbox as well. Uh, sorry, it will show up in Big Box. So I personally use these to mark games that are completed and you can actually see those depending on the theme. Um, so a favorite game, the intention is, you know, a quick way to sort of um, tag your favorites. Uh, complete is games that you've, you've finished with. Um, broken is technically used to indicate um, ROMs that have problems. Uh, maybe it doesn't run optimally or maybe um, it's something that you need to configure in the emulator. So it's a nice way to mark those. Um, hidden, well, actually, it's a quick way of sort of hiding games. I personally use these for hiding like instances of games that I kind of want to keep, but I don't really want to show them. Um, it's things like if I've purchased a game twice, um, I'll sort of keep the the best version unhidden. And then the sort of, you know, maybe it's for an older platform or it's it's uh, maybe it's for like an old PC game that I even don't have anymore. Um, I'll actually just hide that. Um, and it still shows up in the launch box. It's just that you can choose to hide them if you want. Um, and also there are options in big box if you want to sort of say, well, sh you know, hide hidden games, for example. Um, so let's, uh, I mean, what is a game that we should hide? That's a hot take here. What is a game that does not deserve to be on this list? I mean, I don't know. I mean, should we hide Bubsy? I feel like I feel like it's the right thing to do, but I also feel like I feel like there's some there's some there's some love for Bubsy that uh, I might get called out on. But uh, we're going to do it. We're going to hide Bubsy. Sorry, Bubsy. Now you can see how he disappeared, uh, and the reason for that is because under View and Hide Games, I have games marked hidden. If I turn that back off, then uh, there he is. Bubsy's back. Sorry, Bubsy, but uh, you do deserve the hate that you get. Although, to be fair, I haven't played this game yet. Um, it, uh, if it was the 3D game on the PlayStation, then yes, I definitely would hide it. But uh, maybe we'll give this one a chance. Uh, and what I'll also do is turn on, uh, I'm going to turn on completed, broken, hidden, and uh, portable. Unplayed is obviously just if you haven't played it. Um, that's a personal preference. I'm actually going to turn that off. Uh, so the Bubsy's unhidden. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, we're going to mark some games as complete. Um, so for example, I know I've completed Cannon Spike, uh, mainly because it's like a 30 minute game, <laughs> but still good. Uh, Alleyway, Aladdin. What else? DOA 2, original uh, Donkey Kong Country, Donkey Konga. I mean, we could go on. Um, so I'm going to... Uh, I think it's under game completed. We're going to tick that. And there we go. Now we've got a nice little tick there. <laughs> I love that. Or hide games you don't want your friends to uh, know that you play, like Barbie's Lovely Wonderland. Hey, I mean, if it's got achievements, um, I would go for that game. What else do we have? Uh, portable is... The intention of this is to mark... Um, I mean, I think you can kind of interpret it however you want. These actually don't really do anything. They don't adjust anything with your ROMs on disk. It's really just a, a thing that you can use to categorize games. Uh, the idea is that the, the ROM is in a portable location. So if you move your launch box uh, instance, uh, it kind of comes with you. Whereas if it's a ROM that's kind of on an external drive, you could mark it as not portable. And uh, just so you know which ones are sort of contained within your launch box instance. Um, so you can kind of really use these how you want. Like let's say a ROM is broken. Um, uh, I know this one isn't, although let's do it anyway. You then also get a nice little icon that shows that that ROM is broken. And then uh, you can create playlists based on that. You can filter on it. You can search on it. Um, so I could search here, for example. Uh, I could actually search for my games that are uh, complete. Uh, and I'm going to hit yes. And there we go. These are the games that I have completed. Okay, so I personally really love these badges. And like I said, some of them will show up in Big Box. 
Uh, you can also configure these directly in the big box, um, depending on the theme. And that's why I really like them, because when you're finished with a game, uh, you can just quickly mark it as favorite uh, if you find that it's, um, I think you can mark it as broken. Um, but if you find that there's an issue with one, you can quickly mark it as broken and then come back later to uh, get that sorted. So yeah, favorite, broken, hidden, and portable. Um, and installed is uh, is another badge, but that's uh, to denote the installation status. Um, if we use if you use storefronts, um, for, so for example, on uh, Steam, it will actually show the status based on its actual install status. Uh, with ROMs, uh, you can you can choose to mark them if you want. Um, you don't have to. Uh, I use it personally to for sort of big bigger disk based systems that I may not want to keep around all the time. Um, I can say, well, these ones were installed. Maybe I need to clean up some space and I can actually just go ahead and mark those. Okay, so moving along, um, we're almost ready to dive into some uh, additional emulation, but uh, there's one last thing I want to do, which is uh, controller support. So you might have noticed uh, in our badges that uh, are these options for controllers, controller support. Um, now I'm going to turn on things like gamepad, keyboard, and mouse for now. Um, and you can see here these Steam games, uh, it will show which games support a controller. Now, most of them will. Obviously, these ones here, which are older sort of PC games, they don't have that because they are sort of keyboard only. Things like SimCity, Rollercoaster Tycoon. Uh, fantastic games. Worms Armageddon as well. Good old mouse and keyboard action. Um, and this is all based on the controller support. So, for example, it shows Steam controller is uh, partially supported. This data is grabbed when it imported the metadata. Um, but what I want to do is I want to set up a custom controller and I want to add that to some specific games. And the use case I want is, we talked about this yesterday, but uh, who still has their uh, DK Bongos? Probably, arguably, the best controller of all time is DK Bongos. I mean, if you've ever tried to play Smash Bros. Melee with some DK Bongos, then uh, props to you, my friend. So what I want to do is I want to create a custom controller type. I'm going to go to controller support. And right now there's nothing. I'm going to go to manage game controllers. And here we can see the types of controllers that we have. So most of them are associated with Steam controllers, um, Atari joysticks for some of my Atari games. I'm going to go ahead and add. And I'm going to call it DK Bongos. Now I'm going to give it a category you don't have to, but uh, I'm going to give it a category of rhythm because it's technically a rhythm controller. And the associated platforms is going to be Nintendo GameCube. Uh, technically, it could do uh, Wii as well. Uh, I'm going to hit OK. And there we go. So now I'm going to add a controller. I'm going to add the DK Bongos. And I'm going to say that uh, it has full support. I don't think it's required. I think you can use a controller with this game, but uh, you could use that to denote that. I'm going to hit OK. Oh, never had never had the bongos, unfortunately. Uh, it is a shame. One of many gaming regrets is getting rid of my bongos. Getting rid of my DK bongos and my uh, Mario Dance Dance Revolution dance pad. Such a shame. So now that this uh, controller is associated with this game, and I'm also going to do it for DK Jungle Beat because that is a arguably fantastic game that also uses the bongos. And now if I go to badges and under game attributes, uh, I'm sorry, under controller support, we have rhythm. We've got a nice little drum. Nice little drum icon, which denotes a rhythm controller next to these games. So the final thing I want to do is actually create a playlist under the GameCube category. So new playlist, we'll call it DK Bongos. And I want to auto-populate it I want to say that the controller support, and I'm going to say supports, and then I'm going to put in DK Bongos. And now I have a new playlist with DK Bongos, and there we go. Those are my DK Bongo supported controllers. You could do this with things like dance pads if you have those. If anyone's still got their Guitar Hero controllers lying around, you could uh, create playlists with a controller type based on that. Light Guns is another great example. Um, so many great uh, additional controllers. And controller support is just a way that you can mark those games and then filter, search, or create uh, playlists based on 
uh, that specific metadata. <laughs> yes, uh, RE4 chainsaw controller. My goodness. That is a good one. That is a good one. Okay. Alrighty, so we're getting uh, through a lot of stuff, but I think it's time to actually uh, import some more games. Now, we've talked about RetroArch, and RetroArch is uh, obviously great for a lot of uh, earlier systems. Um, when it comes to sort of uh, the early sort of GameCube, Xbox era, um, a lot of those systems we do support as plugins within LaunchBox. So we'll go to Manage and Plugins. Uh, so we support things like PCSX2, Dolphin. So both of those, um, LaunchBox will install and configure those emulators for you. We looked at PCSX2 yesterday. Um, but anything beyond that, um, it's not to say that uh, any emulator is technically possible to be used in LaunchBox, um, assuming it can you know, uh, utilize command, li command line parameters to um, pass game info to it. Uh, you can uh, add those emulators to LaunchBox. So that's what we're gonna do is we're going to add a complete custom emulator. Now, the one I'm going to do today is actually Xbox 360. Now, still early days for that emulator, um, but the re I want to do it for a specific reason. So a few things to get started is I want to grab... Um, so the emulator for Xbox 360 or, or the one of the more popular ones is uh, Xenia. Um, and I'm going to grab this tool called Xenia Manager. Um, this is not uh, in any way associated uh, integrated with LaunchBox, but it's just a tool that I really like because it will it will manage your Xenia instances for you. Um, and the reason I want to do that is if I go to my games. So for Xbox 360, um, I've actually chosen to compress my games into a format called um, ZAR, which is uh, a compression format that's used by Xenia. It actually offers some great compression on Xbox 360 games because those discs can be really, really big. Um, and that format, at least currently, or at least it was, is only supported by the Canary version of Xenia, which is the more sort of um, experimental, up-to-date version of Xenia. So I actually want to install both, and I want to show you what it's like to install not just outside emulators, but how you can have multiple instances of those emulators and you can choose between them in LaunchBox. So what I'll do is in my build under LaunchBox, under emulators, I am just gonna make a new folder and I'm gonna call it Xenia. Now Xenia Manager is the tool that I want to actually use these. Um, yep, some people say love Xenia Manager. It is very good, uh, very new and I think as of yesterday, there, there are multiple different tools that will do this for you. Um, but for example, this one, I just want to install Xenia, Xenia Stable um, and I want to install uh, Canary. So let's do that. Very nice and straightforward. Um, and this tool I can use to configure Xenia. But for now, what it's done is it's created two folders called Xenia Stable and Xenia Canary. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to go back into LaunchBox. Yeah, it's a, it's a little hidden gem. Uh, I think, like I said, there are, there are multiple different tools that will manage Xenia for you because right now, obviously, the emulator itself is uh, not the easiest thing to configure. A lot of configuration files and things like that. Uh, let's go to emulators. So we set up PCSX2 and RetroArch yesterday. I'm going to add. Um, now under here, you can we have a lot of popular emulators. Um, and if you do this, what we will try to do is we will try to populate the command line parameters. We don't do it for every emulator, um, but some of the more popular ones, we'll try and put in some sort of default command line parameters that we know people will use. Uh, and that's mostly things like full screen. Um, it's the most common one. So you can see like PCSX2, a command line parameter is basically just a command that you're giving to the emulator that is run when it's uh, opened with LaunchBox. So although all emulators will usually have a sort of full screen option in the app itself, um, by passing it through as a command line parameter, you're basically saying, you know, only do that when you open it from LaunchBox. And then when you open it outside of LaunchBox, it's just going to open it normally, which I personally like just for, um, it's just a personal preference. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go and we'll add Xenia. Um, 
Now, it hasn't actually done anything. Um, it's just got the, the default command there. But what I am going to do is browse to the location of the um, emulator I just downloaded. So under Launchbox, under Emulators, under Xenia, and under Xenia Stable. Uh, and I'm actually going to call this Xenia Stable. Now, command line parameters, they can be a whole sort of can of worms. Um, unfortunately, it does vary by the emulator itself. Um, I just know, for example, that the full screen command for Xenia is full screen equals true. Some use like dash F, some use dash full screen. Um, it's a whole can of worms, but uh, don't worry about that for now. I just know that what this is going to do is it's going to open Xenia and it's going to launch it in full screen. Um, and I've just realized I forgot to do something because before we do that, we actually need the platform to be in Launchbox. So let's go to my, um, let's go to, uh, what am I looking at? My games, uh, under games, I have Xbox 360. Go, copy that. Because uh, I'm using auto imports. I've got two games. Arguable uh, arguable quality. We've got Sonic the Hedgehog 06. An absolute classic for all the right reasons. Um, as you can probably tell, big Sonic fan here. Enough to put myself through Sonic 06 um, and Street Fighter X Tekken. Which I also was personally... I, I quite liked it. I know it got a, a bit of a mixed reception. That's a good point about uh, on the forum, necessary commands. That's definitely something uh, that would make a nice sort of Q&A post in the future is uh, how to configure those um, command line parameters. Um, I mean, ideally, the goal for us is to actually pre-fill a lot of that for you in Launchbox. So ideally, we would be adding those into the uh, into Launchbox. So when you add the emulator, it would automatically uh, have those pre-filled. Um, but yes, command line parameters, it definitely, especially myself as like a non-programmer, they can be confusing at first. But basically think of them as um, just additional um, functions that are asked at uh, launch. So when you launch a game, it just adds that function. Okay. So uh, while we set up our emulators, any debate on uh, which game we should uh, try first? I mean, we're not going to get far in Sonic 06. But let's go to Manage Emulators. So let's just do that again. Uh, I'm going to add my Xenia stable. I'm going to Browse for Xenia. And my command line for full screen was dash dash full screen equal true. I'm going to copy that because I also want to set up, uh, whoops, and I need to choose a platform which is going to be Xbox 360. And I'm going to set this as, uh, I'm not going to set it as the default because I want to set um, Xenia Canary as the default. So I'm going to put in Xenia Canary. I'm going to navigate to Xenia Canary and I'm going to use the same command line parameters. I love it. You see, this is my kind of, this is my kind of chat. Uh, everyone's voting for Sonic. So, uh, well, if that's the case, we actually have an uh, extra surprise for you coming up. Uh, so I want to use Xenia Canary as the default emulator for Xbox 360, because like I said, I use um, ZAR, which is used by Xenia as a compress compression format. Um, but what you can do is you can configure. So now I've got two emulators set up for Xbox 360. So if I right click, I have this option called launch with and you can do this inside of big box as well. So I can actually choose which one I want to use, Xenia Canary or Xenia Stable. This can be quite uh, useful for um, on the fly, sort of if you want to jump between emulators. Another example is things like um, PSP is a good example where although PSP will run just fine in RetroArch, a lot of people do prefer the standalone PPSSPP emulator. So you could set that up as a different emulator. You could choose which one is the default, and then you'd have the option to launch with either RetroArch or with PPSSPP. Um, but if you don't want to have to do that every time, now I didn't realize you could do this, but uh, if I go to under emulation for a specific game, I can choose which emulator I want it to use. So I can say, well, actually, for Cross Tekken, use the Xenia stable version. 
you can have additional parameters. But for all of my other games, I want to use the default one. And yeah, exactly. It's a good example. Nintendo Switch, there are multiple emulators there, things like 3DS as well, that might have multiple ones and, and performance difference very wildly depending on the emulator that you use. So you can configure multiple emulators for a specific platform and then choose between those. Now, I actually don't want to use Stable. I want to use Canary. And uh, we're going to see if this works. Sonic 06 in full screen. It worked. Fantastic. Ah, that music. I mean, we're definitely not going to get very far, but uh, we can run around the hub world. Single player. Let's uh, not sit through the cutscenes. And oh boy, I miss those loading screens. Although they're much better than I remember. Now I'm running on a Legion Go, which is not a very powerful machine by any means. Um, it has an, int uh, sorry, I mean, it is, it is a, it's a, it's a fantastic machine, but it's obviously integrated graphics. And when we're talking about Xbox 360 emulation, uh, obviously it's still got a long way to go and, but it's okay. I mean, it runs fine. Um, I got some screen tearing that I need to tidy up there, but uh, it's not bad. It's not too bad. I mean, the hub area in Sonic 06 is probably the, uh, the least broken aspect of that game. Although, uh, I don't want to open a whole can of worms. It's uh, debatable, which is the most fun aspect of this game. But I love it. I love this game. All right, we're going to leave you, Tails. Sorry to uh, abandon you at this point. We're going to hit escape. We'll just close out of that. And there we go. Exactly. Looks like, uh, looks like glitchy. I mean, that is... That is Sonic 06 in a nutshell. We'll quickly test out one more. Performance on this one, I think, is uh, a little bit better. But uh, yeah, so as you can see, as this is loading, what we've done is we've added two different emulators. So two different versions of the Xenia emulator. We've added them to LaunchBox. And we have um, given, we've got the option to choose between them. We can mark individual games to use a specific emulator, or we can uh, choose kind of on the fly. And this is really great with more sort of experimental emulators, as people said, things like Switch and um, more modern systems. Uh, I don't want to use the uh, tutorial, although I'm going to get my butt kicked. I mean, let's uh, let's see. Any uh, any votes, Street Fighter Tekken fans? Who should we go with? I mean, let's see. Maybe Jin. Who else should we go with? Ken. Yeah, I always preferred Ken over Ryu. Yeah, let's go Jin and Ken. Maybe we'll have Chun Li, classic. And Lore. Oh, yeah. Let's let's let's. Uh... Where is he? There he is. Or with his uh, annoying hair. How does someone says how does DLC work with this? Well, that's funny because didn't this game have a whole bunch of controversy where uh, the DLC was on disc and they just locked it? If I remember that correctly. Uh, in terms of um, Xbox 360 emulation and DLC, um, that's actually a good question. I'm not 100% sure about that. This is running not too bad. If I remember how to play this, Frankie. And as you can see, I've forgotten all my uh, special commands. Uh, I definitely should not be put in charge of uh, showcasing games like this on stream. But hey, it's all good fun. Hey, okay, there we go. I'm also using my little uh, Legion Go controllers here, which. Uh, they're okay, but uh, not, not the best D-pad in the world for uh, fighting games. But exactly, great game. Good fun. I think this one was just kind of forgotten. And I'm, I'm sad that it's not on Steam. Or at least it was like delisted or, or there were some issues with it. But anyway, we could spend all day getting my butt kicked by Paul. But 
then we're going to move on. Now I'm quite happy with that. I think that works. Exactly. Early days of release. Come on, Capcom. Get it together. Street Fighter, Cross Tekken. So, what we've done is uh, we've added a, uh, a custom emulator. Now, there, obviously, there's so many out there, and uh, we will, like I said, we try and pre fill some of the command line parameters, but uh, you can essentially add uh, any custom emulator to Launchbox as long as it supports, um, uh, come up, supports things like that. So, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at one more platform, and that is uh, Windows games or just Windows applications in general. Um, now, with auto importing, Windows is one of those platforms that will not auto import, and the reason being is that there are, you know, a win if you have like a like a homebrew game or a Windows game that um, has an executable, there's obviously usually a ton of files associated with it. So we don't actually auto import stuff for Windows, um, but I'll show you how you can manually add a game and um, set it up within LaunchBox. So we have a Windows directory. Uh, it doesn't have to be here because it's not being auto imported, but just for uh, keep things tidy, I'm gonna keep things here. Uh, so I'm gonna go to uh, games folder and under Windows. Uh, now we have some interesting games. You know how I said uh, Sonic 06 fans rejoice? Because uh, what we do have, if anyone's familiar with Project Sonic 06, which is a fan recreation essentially of Sonic 06, it is a a non-broken, absolutely fantastic version of Sonic 06. Um, and it is a Windows application. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to Windows. We're going to add a new game. And I did that by Control N or you can just right click um, and just do add. Someone says, can I start LaunchBox into a game directly? Um, I don't think a specific game, but uh, we actually we actually are going to cover something called Startup Apps a little bit later on. Um, and that is, uh, it will allow you to open up certain applications on launch. So things like Steam or if you use a specific, a specific storefront. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm this is a brand new game. So I'm not uh, auto importing anything. Um, I am importing the fan game, which is Project 06. Now I'm going to search for uh, Sonic 06, and uh, it's actually showing me the. Um, this is the PlayStation 3 one. That's not what I want. Um, now I know what the name is, but I'm just going to show you. If you if you're unsure if a game kind of exists in the LaunchBox database, um, you can actually just hop over to the website, which is the uh, GamesDB.LaunchBox, um, and I want to search for. Like, uh, I think it's called Project 06. And there we go. There is an entry in the database. It's called Sonic the Hedgehog P06. So that just helps me uh, know what that is. So I'm just going to type in P06. And there it is. Sonic the Hedgehog P06 for Windows. Fantastic. What we are also going to do is uh, the main thing you need is you need to point it to the application. So under Application Path, this is where you will put the application uh, the exe so if i go to games and windows and this is the application now what it also has is uh this instance also came with a really nice uh, manual and what i want to do is add that to launchbox so i'm going to go to um it's under manuals and under the windows directory i'm just going to uh Drag this one over here. I'm going to rename this to uh, Sonic P06. Uh, and back in LaunchBox, I have a, under media, I have the manual path. But I'm going to direct that to, uh, where is it? There it is. Okay. Now there's no media for this right now, so I'm just going to go to Tools and Download, Update Media and Metadata. This is the wizard we went through yesterday. I'm just going to breeze through this because I want to grab. Uh, give me all the media. And there we go. We've got a brand new game. We've got a, a manual. 
for that game. Go under media and view manual. And there we go. We've got the uh, custom user manual. And there we go. So that is the that is a custom Windows app. And uh, I've just shown you how to manually import that into your instance. So now if I were to go ahead and actually play that. And I highly recommend giving this a go for any uh, if you want to play Sonic 06 uh, without all the broken physics, although maybe that's part of its charm. Okay. And here we go. So we're actually going to skip the... Uh, we're going to skip the uh, hub world and we're going to jump straight into... The, the, this, uh, this recreation is basically... It's just the action stages, which is, of course, why we want to play. Um, but yeah, so this is not running too bad on my... Legion Go, uh, this is a custom Windows application. It's not running through any sort of emulation. And this is looking pretty fantastic. And it feels fantastic as well. And you'll notice, uh, anyone remember this section where you would infamously clip through the floor? It is actually running fantastic. Now, I could play this all day, but I think we should move on. Uh, okay, so let's uh, get out of that. All right, uh, we're going to add, just to recap what that process is, pretty straightforward, we're going to add a game. Um, I'm going to add uh, a good old classic. Anyone remember 3D Pinball? 3D Pinball for Windows, back in 1995. Came out on... Uh, uh, I can't remember the name. It was a pinball game, but also uh, included with uh, Windows 95 PCs. Um, I have a version of this, which I want to uh, import. It is in my Windows folder, Space Connect. And um, did I copy that over? Just double check. I did copy it over. Ah, oh, there it is. Just took a while. Exactly, yes. Very good game. Uh, probably ported to all systems at this point. I think you can get a free version of it off the Microsoft Store, but it's not, it's not the original. It's not got uh, different branding, looks a bit different, not, not quite the same. Um, what, I, uh, what you can do is you can actually download media directly from this window uh, as well. Um, so if you want to uh, just quickly grab media for a specific game, then you can just grab that here, which is what I'm going to do. There we go. Got my logos. There we go. The classic 3D pinball. So I've set up an application. Um, it's linked to a Launchbox ID. There we go. I mean, this is where we could really waste all day on the stream. And we've got to make sure that we turn on the classic music. Oh, ho. I mean, that's sounding uh, a little bit crunchy, but. Exactly. The days of uh, pre-installed games on Windows PCs. Microsoft Entertainment Pack. Anyone? Uh, Chips Challenge. All of those. Ski Free. All of those old uh, Microsoft games. Yeah, Ski Free. Exactly. Now this isn't full screen. Um, uh, they have a, their own option to set this as full screen. So there are some clever ways you could force this into full screen after loading it. Um, but for now, I think we're happy with this. Minesweeper, yes, exactly. Oh man. A fantastic uh, collection of uh, old Microsoft pre-installed games. Uh, I mean, Mac is severely lagging behind with uh, chess, which I think is the only game. Not a bad game, but uh, 
is the only pre-installed macOS game. Exactly. Time for some Minesweeper. Okay. Let's uh, see where we're at. So we have uh, a little bit of uh, time. Um, I think I know uh, a lot of people are eagerly anticipating the code and uh, that will be coming soon. So uh, make sure you stick around. Of course, you can uh, you can watch the replay on this if uh, if you want to catch up on that later. It will be valid for the day. So don't worry about that as long as it's within the day. Um, we're going to show uh, two more quick things. We're going to show plugins and we're going to show themes. Now, these are uh, this is where you can really start unlocking the potential and power of LaunchBox. So plugins are, um, and not to be confused with um, LaunchBox's sort of official emulation plugins. Um, these are sort of community-made um, additional tools that you can import into LaunchBox to do a whole host of different things. Um, so if you go to our forum and under downloads, under uh, third-party apps and plugins. You can actually browse a whole bunch of community-created plugins. And some of these are absolutely fantastic. They do a whole bunch of different things. Um, things like uh, Steam DB Scraper, um, uh, Bezel Launcher, uh, a whole bunch of, of different things, super pause menus, things like that. Uh, the one I want to grab is a recent one that I found particularly useful, which is uh, How Long to Beat. Um, and this is, uh, the idea of this plugin is it will scan the how long to beat um, database, and it will tell you for games in your library how long it takes to beat those. It's quite nice when you're sort of choosing a game that you want to play, you're not sure how long it will take, um, or what the sort of time commitment is up front. Um, this is a really cool plugin that can help with that. Um, so I've already downloaded it, um, and most plugins will come in a .dll file. Um, and all you have to do is go into LaunchBox. I'm just going to close it um, so that it installs properly. And under the plugins directory, this is where we have our plugins, but you can add community plugins. So I'm just going to take this one. I'm going to drag and drop into that directory. And now I'm going to relaunch LaunchBox, just as simple as that. We do have plans in the, uh, in the long term. Eventually, we would love to be able to uh, have these plugins be managed through our community, uh, sorry, managed through our plugin manager, like you can with the emulation plugins. Um, but right now, uh, this is the kind of the old method of uh, good old drag and drop. Now, every plugin is different, but most plugins will be, uh, will usually have some form of, of right click uh, option. So let's, uh, for example, uh, let's take Aladdin. Let's right click on this game and now we have that plugin that I just installed. It is as simple as that. Now, obviously, definitely read the descriptions for each developer's plugins. They will usually tell you sort of how to use them and how to set them up. Um, but this one is very straightforward. Um, I can actually just click on this and it goes and it scans the directory. Um, and there we go. It asked me to choose a version because there's obviously tons of versions and it's saying the main story is one hour, 48 minutes, which is cool. I'm like, yep, I got that time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. But likewise, uh, let's find a, a long game. I mean, let's see. I know I do want to get stuck into Grand Blue uh, Relink. Uh, let's see how long this one takes. Oh, there we go. Main story, only 15 hours, but uh, the completionist is uh, five whole days. That is crazy. Uh, this one in particular is actually really nice because they give you the option to add these values to custom fields. Um, which is a perfect segue because what we uh, didn't look at is custom fields. Now, this is where you can add additional metadata to your games that doesn't really fall into any of these other categories. You can add new values into the default fields. For example, if you want to add things like a new release type, genres, series, you can, of course, edit all of that. Um, and this is really personal preference, but it depends on how you like to organize your um, information. So a custom field, I, for example, one example that I like to use is I like to track my um, a sort of purchase history. So I'm going to call this purchased and I'm going to add a value of digital or physical um, just to sort of track which games I have physical versus which ones I um, 
physically own. Um, now, this may look different for some of you. Uh, you may be used to this just being a sort of uh, text field. Uh, in the latest version, uh, this is actually now a dropdown. So for example, if uh, I hit OK, um, and let's go and which one, what, what physical game, I mean, I got a whole bunch of physical games, this one. Um, You'll see now I have the option there for digital, but I also want physical. Yeah, okay. Uh, and now let's take a bunch of games. Like I know I own all of these ones, for example. Um, and I'm going to say a custom field purchased. And now I've got the option of choosing digital or physical. And there we go. I can create uh, different playlists off that uh, information. If I wanted to create a, a sort of history playlist that shows me all of my digital versus physical games, then you could do that as well. Um, and the reason I show you that is because this plugin specifically will allow you to save those times to a, a custom field. There's certainly a lot more we could do with custom fields. Um, for example, it, it really is just a sort of string text field right now. Um, I know there are requests for sort of different like checkboxes and things like that, but uh, for now we sort of give you the option to add custom information and, and now that you can choose those options from a drop down it's become a little, little bit easier and a bit more manageable all right we are we're going to quickly jump into themes and uh we're going to jump into big box um but i think before we do that i think it's time for round two of our favorite code so if anyone didn't manage to grab a code yesterday, this is now your chance. Just to remind people, you can go to our celebration page. You can go to the giveaway um, and the code that will very shortly appear on screen uh, can be used to boost your odds and get some additional uh, giveaway points. Uh, and I just realized, I realized it's been a bit quiet because our uh, background music is not here. So in three, two, one. So somewhere on screen is uh, the code. And again, much like yesterday, props if anyone anyone can give us, uh, let us know what that code is. It does have a, a special meaning. Although this one's a little bit more self-explanatory than yesterday's, which was just a bunch of numbers. So we're gonna leave this on screen till the rest of the stream. So uh, don't worry, it's not going anywhere. Um, but just remember that this code is only valid for today. Um, so if you try to input this code tomorrow, it uh, likely won't work. Um, but don't worry, if you don't have a chance, uh, you can always join uh, our other streams throughout the week and we'll be handing out new codes every day. And yes, uh, I should clarify, if you've already used a code from yesterday, then uh, this one won't, won't do anything. This one won't give you additional entries. Um, the code is a one-time thing, so uh, it won't uh, give you additional ones. Okay. So we got a little bit more to uh, cover. <laughs> yes, I was just setting up that game in uh, Launchbox. Yes, relating to the code. Um, so we're going to spend the rest of this stream uh, diving into big box. So do hang around. Um, what we um, what we want to look at is uh, themes. So this is the real sort of this is where our community has done some just incredible things with Launchbox. Um, the potential to sort of customize and create different types of themes. Um, just seeing what people have created is uh, fantastic. Now, as a new user or, or sort of a relatively new user, you might think that it's quite scary, but I just want to show you just kind of how easy and, and quickly you can just test out some of these themes. Um, obviously, if you want to go down the rabbit hole of theme creation, that is a whole other can of worms. And we have some fantastic workshops coming up in the week that will cover that if that's your um, cup of tea. But uh, for now, uh, if you just want to sort of dabble in seeing what the additional themes are like, then this is, uh, this is what you can do. Okay, so there are two, um, I should say you can actually theme both Launchbox and Bigbox. Um, Launchbox itself has its custom themes and Bigbox has custom themes. So we're gonna look at both. We're gonna go to tools um, and we are going to go to 
I can actually remember where it is. I'm, I'm blanking here. I've completely... I've completely forgotten where, where it is. Oh, it's under Manage. Of course it is. Yes. There we go. So under Manage Launchbox Themes. I uh, had a bit of a moment there. Thank you. So under Launchbox Themes, this is where we can configure the theme for Launchbox. So right now we are using the default. Now there are a couple of uh, additional ones here that you can sort of uh, peruse and see what you fancy. If you want to try out any of these themes, it is literally as simple as uh, clicking on install. So uh, I'm going to go with Omni here, um, which is a fantastic theme. I'm going to hit install. And that's it. It's literally said the theme has been installed. I'm going to hit apply and it's going to ask me to restart Launchbox. And here we go. So we are back in Launchbox with a brand new look and feel. Let's uh, more boxes on screen. Oh no, sorry, that's the music. Once. There we go. Now this theme has some fantastic views that I actually really enjoy, which is um, if I go to, for example, uh, you've got the list view. Um, you still have, you know, your sort of platform categories. Um, certain things move around with different themes. So for example, if you're used to the search being in the top left, in this theme, it's right in the middle with the filter. You've still got the game details page. Um, but uh, what this theme has that I really like is uh, this view here, which is sort of cover box, but also, I'm sorry, um, covers of the boxes, but also in a list. Um, and the thing that I really like about this is that it also has achievements. So you can see the progression of your achievements. Um, if we search for the game that we unlocked some achievements, which is Kirby, uh, then you can see that I have, I'm 3% through the game already. So this is a really nice way that I can kind of peruse and see some games that I might want to finish off. So every theme is obviously different. Um, there is a lot of customization within each one. Certain ones focus on different things. For example, some of them prefer a sort of more streamlined list view, whereas others want to put some of the media more front and center. Um, so you can kind of experiment with which theme you want to use inside of Launchbox. But um, of course, what you can do is you can use a theme inside of Big Box, and this is where the real power comes into play. So let's launch that and let's see what it looks like. Now I will say what I have done since yesterday is uh, I have gone and downloaded videos for all of my games. And especially within Big Box, uh, this just really helps um, elevate the themes. Now, it's not necessary and um, a lot of the themes will work just fine with just still images, but uh, I think a lot of the themes in Bigbox are specifically designed to assume that you have video content in there. So definitely not uh, not required, but um, can be uh, can be quite nice. And I think these have uh, music as well. There we go. So we can skip through some games, and these will have. Um, I think most of these will have uh, videos associated with them. Now this is the default theme, uh, which does use videos if, uh, if they're there, but uh, it doesn't really sort of make the most of them. Oh, we talked about Sonic Spinball yesterday. Uh, the fantastic music, the, the one, one of the redeeming features of this game. I d definitely have a bit of a soft spot for it. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're going to go to manage themes. Now this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have the themes that I've installed. Um, and you can also see some, for example, the most popular or newly updated themes. Um, I'm just going to go with most popular. And you can kind of see little previews of the types of themes that you can use. Um, so all of them sort of focus on different things. Uh, these are some just amazing contributions from our community. Um, you can 
spend all day browsing through these. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to take um, uh, I'm going to take one called uh, Coverbox, uh, which I believe I already installed. If you want to install one, you can uh, just uh, under the install button, and that will just uh, go ahead and install it. You do need to apply it after um, after it's been installed. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I was going to say, what are what are people's favorites? I know. Uh, I mean, let's let's also install one other one alongside Coverbox. So, any suggestions? Uh, which is a good one? I haven't actually checked out all of these myself. So, uh, someone says colorful white might be a good one. Um, although I should say, uh, not all themes. Um, I mean, there are tons of themes that are on the forum as well. Um, and correct me, correct someone, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, it's not just the ones that are in here. I mean, you can install themes from the forum. Um, you can download them and install them directly. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that might be the way that some people do it. And, and yeah, not everyone knows that you can actually download some of them directly from within uh, Big Box. Unified, yep. I know that's a favorite one. Let's actually see what that looks like. Uh, let's take... This one because I know I don't have that many videos. Let's install that. Yep, unified looks good on the cabinet. Uh, yep, and that is also a good point. Um, of course, Big Box is uh, part of the LaunchBox Premium license. Um, but uh, as we talked about yesterday, the most recent uh, the, the 30.16 will include a free trial of Big Box, so you can actually test this out. But uh, Themes is not one of those things that you'll get access to. So it is a premium feature. Okay, so we were on Manage Themes. We've got a couple of themes here. There we go, Coverbox, that's the one I wanted to show. Um, so I want to apply as main theme. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, there are many more on the forums, but you won't get things like preview images within Big Box for them. Makes sense. Okay, so now we're using a theme called Coverbox, which I know is a particular favorite. We're gonna go to platform categories. And because I also have uh, platform videos, uh, it will show me a nice little video for all of my platforms. So things like within the individual handhelds, I will get a nice uh, little overview video of that platform. Uh, let's dive into, for example, Game Boy Advance. Classic system. And here we go. So I've got uh, gameplay videos for each of these games. So as I scroll through, I can actually get like a nice little preview of these games. Oh, Final Fantasy Tactics. Good, good game. And the nice thing about this theme specifically is uh, each of the platforms and a lot of theme developers choose to do this, is uh, you can have different views depending on the platform. So Game Boy Advance, for example, um, but I know, uh, let's choose uh, PlayStation. So you can see this one's a little bit different. It's uh, made to represent a sort of PS1 uh, box, which is cool. Gex, Enter the Gecko, fantastic. Uh, if we go to PlayStation 2, for example, done in the theme of each console. Um, and exactly, this is only just scraping the surface. Uh, There's a very good point to highlight, which is, uh, I mean, this is the, the most basic you can get when it comes to uh, configuring and sort of installing themes. Like, uh, definitely check out our forums for some just wild things that our community has done with themes. Uh, there was one that I was looking for, uh, where was it? GameCube had a nice bit of customization. Check out my DK Bongo's game. There we go. Look at that. Got the nice GameCube box. Okay. Let's quickly go and check out one of the other themes that we had. Which was... Under... Unified. I haven't actually tried this one yet, so let's see, uh, let's see what it looks like. Um, I should note as well, you know, themes, are, of course, are dependent on the type of media that you have in your library. Like some theme developers will opt to really sort of put things like videos front and center. Um, some utilize sort of boxes more prominently. So you may, of course, obviously just, just follow the instructions on, on that um, 
uh, theme developers page and, and they'll usually tell you kind of what to expect from that, uh, from that theme. So this is already looking pretty cool. Uh, let's go to, uh, I wanna go to platform categories. There we go. So I can imagine this looks uh, super swanky on a, on a nice arcade cabinet. Uh, let's see, do we have individual platform themes? Yeah, it looks like it. That's nice. Got ones for Xbox 360. I didn't get any videos for those games because we just imported them. Um, but let's find one that does. Uh, Super Nintendo, for example. These are the uh, playlists that I created yesterday for Super Nintendo. So let's check out like puzzle games. Love puzzle games. Oh, oh, that is nice. Ooh, this one's very nice, actually. Goof Troop, that was a fantastic game. Now let's see, um, I think, yes, here we go, this might work. Oh, okay, so I think certain themes will uh, leverage different uh, views. So as we looked at yesterday, you can have different views within um, sort of things like um, game platforms, um, but I believe uh, certain ones will work better with, yeah, there we go. I wonder if, um... oh, it still works with, with, yeah. So this one obviously relies on, on vertical wheels. Um, if we were to change this to uh, things like wall view, then of course we're missing out on all the uh, the fun stuff. Um, but definitely play around. I know, I think some developers also include support for sort of different different views within that theme. This is really nice. I actually really quite like this. So there we go. That is Big Box Themes in a nutshell. Like we said, it is only scraping the surface of just what you can do with these. Um, and just a big shout out and congrats to the development community for these themes for uh, just creating some wild things. Um, and I know it's a, it's a thing that, you know, really kind of makes big box look uh, just incredible is uh, all these themes that come along with it. Righty. So, um, I think, uh, I think we're going to start wrapping it up fairly soon. It's, uh, it's been a fun stream. So just to recap, what we covered is, uh, we covered a whole bunch. We, uh, we looked at the uh, the new save manager, which is coming out in 13.16. We looked at retro achievements. We looked at sort of advanced customization of metadata with things like badges, icons, um, playlists, and creating sort of custom uh, categories and things like that. Uh, controller supports. Uh, we then looked at uh, adding additional emulators um, outside of things like RetroArch and custom applications like Windows apps as well. Um, and then, of course, looking at customization, things like plugins, um, and then theming for both LaunchBox, um, the desktop app, and BigBox as well. So quite the, uh, quite the jam-packed stream. Um, thank you all for sticking around. Um, we're going to hang out for a little bit uh, just to answer some questions, if anyone has. But uh, if, uh, if you need to jump off, then um, thank you for coming. Don't forget, we do have uh, future streams uh, coming every day for the rest of this week, especially if you're interested in plugins, uh, definitely check out tomorrow's stream. And if you're interested in themes, then uh, definitely check out Thursdays. Um, there will be some amazing insights going on in those streams. And our final stream is uh, where we're going to be hanging out a bit more casual and uh, playing some games as well. So uh, we're going to hang out for a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to show one last thing uh, just uh, while we wait. Uh, and uh, yes, if you haven't grabbed the code, uh, it is on screen um, and it is only valid for today. So I'm going to switch back to uh, I'm going to switch back to Coverbox just for now. It's a good question, actually. It says after this week, how regularly do you think you guys will be streaming? Um, so this is obviously a new platform for us, um, and we would love to uh, do a lot more with this. Um, we're still kind of figuring that out in 
what cadence that might be and uh, what type of content um, would be useful. But uh, yes, we definitely uh, we definitely don't want this to be just a one-time thing. Uh, we would like to use this to do more of these kind of casual uh, sort of chats and, and workflow run-throughs more often. Okay, so what I wanted to quickly show is uh, pause themes. Now, I want to set a shortcut for these under controller mappings. So I'm using a little controller here and under so pause screen. Okay. Because if I, let's go back into Nightmare in Dreamland. Someone says, remind me how to install that, uh, how long to complete plugin. Uh, so the, the workflow for installing plugins is you will have a usually a DLL file and you have to drop it into LaunchBox's plugins directory. Uh, just make sure it's closed. Uh, or if you have done it, you will need to relaunch LaunchBox for it to take effect. You just drop that file into that plugins folder. Um, and then of course, depending on the plugin itself with that one we showed, how long to beat, uh, you just right click on the game. Um, and then you will you will see that option. Uh, and of course, sorry, if you're referring to where you get them from, uh, of course, as someone said, it's on the forum under downloads. Um, in fact, once I've done this, I'll, I'll show you where that is. Uh, so I just wanted to show uh, pause themes inside a big box. I actually really love these. Um, I've set a command for it on my controllers and uh, when I press it, here we go. Now, this is a, a sort of uh, very basic pause theme. Uh, you can use different ones but so what i really like about these is it has the option to view achievements so you can view the achievements directly from this pause theme which is really nice um and you can also view the manual like i was saying yesterday uh, this can be quite fun for uh um i need to zoom out a little bit here but this can be quite fun for uh you know if you're playing games you don't really want to look at your phone you want to go old school and look at the manual uh, you can pull up the pause theme and you can just do that right there Uh, you can also do things like, uh, it's just a nice way to pause the game. Um, you can do things like save states. Um, and I, you can also use this to just quickly quit out of the game as well. Okay. Let's go back to desktop mode. Uh, for those who are asking about uh, plugins, so you would go to downloads on our forum. Uh, you would go to third party apps and plugins. Uh, and there you go. This one specifically is the one we looked at, and then you just drop that into the uh, LaunchBox plugins directory. There it is, uh, and then it should be uh, should be up and running. Yep, it's a good point about. Uh, I think someone was asking previously about adding things like magazines. Um, yeah, I mean technically any sort of PDF will work, um, and I know some people like to add uh, additional. Some people, I think some people even use additional applications to add things like strategy guides and a whole host of media that relates to the, uh, to the game itself. Thank you for all the kind words, guys. Upgraded to uh, Forever License. Good shout. Thank you very much. Yeah, nice question, Rich, about does karaoke, that would be fun. Any chance of LaunchBots doing this? Uh, I'm not gonna pretend that I know much about how karaoke emulation works. I mean, if it, if it is an emulator that, uh, I'm not sure how it would sort of pass and load games, but in theory, you, you could add a custom emulator to LaunchBox that, that launches those things. Obviously, it's, the, it's all the other pieces where, uh, you know, things like launching in full screen and passing, you know, the right command line parameters to it, so. Um, Unfortunately, can't speak too much on that, but uh, we know folks do like to add a lot of custom emulators to LaunchBox, um, so hopefully that could work. Yeah, come on today, I'm patiently waiting for a Linux version. Yep, uh, I do anticipate this question to come up probably every day. Um, I also went since um, yesterday and added this to our AMA because I know a lot of people are asking about this. 
I think we definitely want to provide a bit more, bit more context on this as to uh, what this would entail and kind of where we're at. So um, yeah, definitely keep an eye on that AMA post. We'll have a lot more information there and we'll also be talking about it on uh, our closing stream as well. Yeah, thanks for all the kind words. You guys are the best. Greetings from Colombia. Well, thank you. And thank you all for joining uh, wherever you are, especially if our, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we don't have many Europeans here with us. I know it's very late there, but um, you can catch this stream again on uh, Twitch. It will be available for a couple of days after the stream. If you didn't grab this uh, code, then uh, don't worry. You can see all the glorious happenings there again. Yep, still from the UK. Are we still, we, we still have our uh, friends from the UK. Yep, and in Spain. Oh, fantastic. You guys are very kind. Thank you for uh, hanging around. Got me thinking about uh, karaoke now. That, uh, that I think uh, for me personally, it's got to be... Um, I think I'd probably choose to get uh, Guitar Hero probably pro properly up and running um, before some proper... Karaoke, uh, not going to pretend that I am the best singer in the world. Amazing. Well, I'm really glad people learn new things today. Um, yeah, definitely let us know what you found helpful. And uh, this has been really fun to kind of prepare. And if you guys like and sort of learn from these types of sessions, then maybe it's something that we can do uh, more of going forward. Yep, I think we all do too. Um, I want more big box themes from, uh, from Feyran. There's your request. The people want it. Let's make it happen. Yeah, it's a good question um, about uh, hiding uh, the license. Uh, unfortunately, there isn't a way to do that right now. Um, but that isn't uh, that is a, actually a very interesting use case there, which is uh, to do with streaming. And and I think that is perfectly valid. I think Discord does this really well, where. Uh, you know, it has streamer mode and it sort of truncates um, people's names and things like that. Um, but yeah, I haven't actually heard that one before. So that's a really good use case for that. Yeah, exactly. Definitely join uh, Thursday's stream if uh, you want to see uh, Bayran making the magic happen in action with uh, themes. And uh, I'm sure he'll probably be playing Tapper at the same time. Ooh, I thought it was a bit quiet as well. Keep forgetting to turn my music back on. All right, well, I think uh, I think we're going to call it there for the day, but um, really appreciate you guys coming. Thank you so much. Definitely stay tuned to our celebration page for more things coming. Uh, these are all links to the various events that are happening throughout the week. Um, this will be my, uh, my final stream. Tomorrow we've got... Uh, uh, Josh going over um, behind the scenes code questions. We're going to be looking at some plugins. Um, Brian or, or Farron is going to be running the stream on Thursday to do with themes. And that's going to be uh, fantastic for those who are interested in, in theming. Um, and of course, even if you're not, you know, I know these are definitely uh, more advanced streams, but uh, definitely go along and see what they're about. You might find out that uh, it's not as scary as you might think. And maybe you can start developing your own themes. Um, and then on Friday, it's going to be all three of us. We're going to be back and uh, playing some games, answering some questions from our AMA, um, and just generally hanging out and having a good time. So we really appreciate you guys giving up uh, time to hang out with us. All righty. Well, thanks for all the uh, kind comments and uh, hope you're having a good, uh, a good day, morning, evening, and uh, we shall see you soon. Thanks, everyone, and uh, we'll be back. Take care.